Good day, good day, good day to you all. God bless you. I hope uh, you are tuning in wherever you're tuning in from. Please begin to share this broadcast. This is Pastor A316 here on Soul Online Radio. That's just a timeless radio station. And this is uh, also sharing on uh, the 316 Gospel Radio. All right. I'll be teaching for my book today, which I wrote. Okay. I've got a copy of it. It's called uh, Find. All right. How to Find and How to Be Found. This is a book that I wrote ages ago. All right, uh, it's a book on love. All right, so we'll be teaching the basic principles about love and uh, so on and so forth. So wherever you are, please feel free to share this. Thank you for joining, Sister Mambo. Thank you for inviting so many friends. We're gonna just be watching out for whoever is coming on live. But before we start, let's start with a word of prayer. Father, we are praying today. Thank you for your grace. Thank you for your mercy. We pray that as we start this day today. May you be with the listeners. May they be blessed. May they find revelations. May they find keys. May they find uh, deliverance in every area of their life. Thank you, Father. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Hallelujah. So thank you so much for joining. Thank you, Sister Abuela, for joining. Welcome. Thank you, Sister Mwate. Welcome. All right. So thank you, everybody, for joining. God bless you. Today we're going to be teaching on uh, the topic I've entitled Find. All right, find, find, find. There are a lot of single people out there. All right, this is good for you. Uh, this is also for people that are married, that are, that are, that are, that are already married. You're going to learn something that, that's going to be good for you. That's going to bless you. That's going to bless your soul and bless your heart. All right, so we're going to be talking about find today. I hope uh, some of you have got this book. You can open to it. I'm going to be teaching more revelations because revelations are... Are, are, are dimensional, right? They change all the time, okay? They are found more than once. Welcome, sister. Well, God bless you, all right? So I'm going to be learning about find and how to be found, right? Nobody in life wants to be alone, all right? Nobody in the wants to be alone. I certainly didn't want to be alone. I wanted to find somebody who I love to share my life with, to share my dreams with, to share a lot of things. Why? Because I did not want to be alone. I was in the UK for a very long time, and I was alone for over 10 years, and I tell you what, life can be lonely even for guys, all right? So I decided I want to get married. I want to find someone I can share my future with. And uh, uh, not because I was lonely, but because I realized I needed somebody who just to be with a friend. I needed a company. God said it's not good for a man to be alone, all right? So why was I looking for somebody? I was looking for somebody I could do three things. I call them the three W's. Somebody write that down. You need someone you can walk with, all right? Because this journey is long. So it's not a marathon. You're not rushing for anything. You're not rushing for a wedding because your friends are married, because your sisters are married, because the biological clock is ticking. No, it's not a, it's not, it's not a speed dash. It is a marathon. You've got to find someone you can walk with. So number one, you've got to walk with somebody, a partner who you can walk with, same step in sequency, all right? Uh, you do that on your wedding. It's not That's not just a planned dance. No, it's showing you how life should be. You're meant to walk together. The second thing I was looking for, my second W, is someone I could work with, all right? Because God put Adam and Eve in the garden and he placed them to tend the garden. They're supposed to work the garden. They're supposed to work for a better future. They're supposed to work for better things, for a better tomorrow. So I was looking for someone I could walk with and then I had to find someone I could work with and then I had to find someone who could watch out, all right, for me. And I could watch out for the person, all right? Those are my three W's, okay? All right, someone I can walk with, someone I can work with, someone who can watch out for me, and I can watch out for them because I've got flaws, okay? Sometimes my heart maybe may be too good. Maybe she can show me that, no, you're overlooking, you're overstepping. Sometimes maybe I could be too angry or too whatever it is. The person is going to watch out for me, watch out for the best interest for us, and vice versa, all right? This is going to help you a lot because you're going to realize that in life, uh, life shouldn't be about a fantasy relationship or any of these things. All right. So uh, the Bible here now in the book of Proverbs 18, 22, somebody write that down. The Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor from the Lord. We know that scripture so well. Okay. He who finds a wife 
finds a good thing. So the women are meant to be found by the men. Men are meant to be hunters because in your nature as a man, you are meant to be a hunter. All right, so you've got to find the woman. And the man, you've got to know what you're looking for when you want to find the woman. And the women also, you've got to be in a place where you are a receptor. All right, you've got to be found. You've got to be in a place where you can be found. All right. Uh, I was looking at uh, uh, Genesis somewhere in the book of, I think, Genesis 2 there, yeah? uh, when God puts Adam to sleep, all right, or is it Genesis 1 or 2? God puts Adam to sleep, and, and uh, why did Adam go into, the Bible says Adam went into a deep sleep. Why? Because the precious things of the world, the diamonds of the world, the gold of this world, are not found at the top surface. They're found in the deep things. So Adam had to go deeper in his sleep and deeper in the spirit for God to bring in the bride, all right? So deep calls unto deep, okay? So uh, here now, we're going to look at another scripture I'm going to show you, and I'm going to look at it from a different point of view. It's Luke 10, verses 27. The Bible says, Love the Lord your God with all your heart, number one, with all your soul, number two, and with all your strength, number three. Okay, relationships are about love. Love is the most important thing. And where can we best learn love from? We best learn love from God the Father, all right? Now, he said three things that are important if you're going to enjoy a successful uh, relationship courtship or engagement and then marriage all right number one you've got to understand the three deep things of love number one that there's love of the heart all right the bible says love the lord your god with all your heart there's a love of the heart all right that is serious that is what you call the holy place that is the fundamental place all right then there's what is known as the love the lord with all your soul the soul is the inner part so you've got the center part the Heart, okay, and then you've got the inner part, and then love the Lord your God with all your mind. Mind constraints of everything that is on the outer court, all right. So there are three levels at which someone can love you. There are three levels at which a man can love you, three levels at which a woman can love you. They can love you from the heart, they love you regardless of what you have, what you've what you don't have, where you've been, where you haven't been. That is true love, all right? That is love that does not judge, love that is not fixated on what they see, but love that is fixated on who the person is. Then there is a the love of the soul. A lot of people love people because they like to be around them. It's to do with the soul, the, the emotions. They've got the same kind of vibe. They've got the same kind of energy, all right? And then there are some people who love someone because of the mental intellect, because of the, the mind, because of the physical stature, all right? Because of how they look or who they are or what job they have. Those are the three types of, uh, of love. We're going to be going through that in very detailed. And you know, one of the funny things that when God made the temple, the first uh, 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 temple that God made with Moses, he made three parts, okay? He made the outer court, he made the inner court, and then he made the Holy of Holies. And then God now calls Solomon to build the temple, and tell Solomon now also makes a three-story building, all right? So that this had three-story buildings. It was a three-story building, Solomon's temple. A three was very fundamental. Then Jesus says that, you know, destroy this temple and I'll rebuild it in three days. Why? Because the body is made out of three days. It stayed in the grave for three days. There were things that he was defeated on those realms, all right? So we're going to go, we won't go deep into those, into that uh, uh, eschatology and all that, but we're going to stick on something that is good, all right? So love is important in any relationship. You've got to be in love with the guy. You've got to be in love with the woman. You've got to be really in love. You can be in love by the mind, by their work. That is outer, all right? When you're in love with how they look, their physique, all right? Whatever God has given them, that is of the mind. Those are the things of the outside. Then you can love someone because of the soul, because of what you have together, how you get together, how you get together, how you connect the vibe, the energy that they have. And then there's one which is not based on feelings, one which is not based on sight. There's one which is based on the heart. This one is, you know, this one is the love, love, love. That one is the heart, okay? So those are the three types of love. So you, I'm going to ask you that there's a two types of women in this world. There are two types of women. I'm going to ask you what kind of a woman are you? Are you a woman who would want me to give you the best watch that is out there? Gucci watch. All right? 19 carat diamonds and gold. In fact, it's got uh, rose gold. Watch. Would you like me to give you that watch? When you walk in town, everybody looks at you. 
or would you want me to spend time with you? Believe me or not, there are women who would rather have the watch than have the time. There are people that want to have the watch. They can show it on Instagram. They can show it on Facebook. They can show it uh, uh, on the Twitter. They can show it uh, on what else is the TikTok, wherever you are. They can show it off. My man has bought me this, but the man is not. Where is the man? Where is the guy? He's not there. Or there's a person who's going to be there. He won't buy you the watch, but he'll spend the time with you. So you've got to decide what you want in life because those are the two types of people that you will find. So as we break down this topic, uh, we're going to look deeper into uh, what relationships are. I noted in, 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 my, in this little book of mine, it's called uh, Find. Some of you need to buy it. It's on Amazon. I think it's nine pounds. I'm going to reduce the price today. I'm going to put it at $4.99. All right. I want to reduce the price today. For this month, I'll reduce the price for this book. You can get it for yourself. All right. So um, there's something that I noticed. All right. Uh, some people uh, are plastic coated. They're, they're, they're like made out of plastic. Relationships are made out of plastics nowadays. All right. You introduce the plastic to fire, the plastic will melt. There are some relationships, immediately trouble comes, the relationship finishes. You introduce a plastic to wait, the relationship will break. You just add a little bit of pressure to a person. You find that some people you're dating and you're going through something and you ask them for some help. That pressures them and the relationship breaks. Ah, she likes money. No, you're going through something. Yes, they're supposed to, they're supposed to be your helper. All right? Not that she likes money. Next one is uh, you introduce uh, plastic to time. It loses color. You know, just find that some people will like you just because of the way you dress that day. Like, I give them a three months later. They won't be, they won't like you. <laughs> they'll look at you and they say, ah, you're calling them, you're texting them, they're blocking you, they're ignoring you. Why? Because introduce a plastic to time, it loses color. Introduce a plastic to weight, it breaks. Introduce a plastic to heat, it will what? It will melt. So those are some of the fundamental things I've seen. Those are some of the things I do when I'm doing counseling with people because I begin to figure out what character are you so that we can see that there's problems here. Is this going to break you or is this going to help make you? There is fire here. Is this going to melt you or is this going to make you solid, more stronger? There is, a, there is a time here. It's a time complex situation. Give time to the person to change. Is it going to fade away? Is the love going to go or is the love going to stay? So those are some of the things I deal with when, I, when I'm dealing with uh, uh, counseling at, at, at a close level. Now, when you are going to find somebody, because we're, we're talking about find, right? So if you're going to find somebody, there are four stages in which you must go through, all right? Don't rush in. Meet You meet somebody, you go out the very first time. Don't rush them into bed. Don't rush them into bed. Don't rush them into romance. Don't rush them into all those things. There are four stages of every friendship you should have. I call them the four C's of friendship. Somebody write that down. The four C's of friendship, all right? First of all, you should have a contact friend. That is C number one, a contact friend. The person should be a bump into guy. Hi, bye, eh? Kwapwa. You know, you, you hi, bye, and you make sure you're dressed good, you're looking good, hi, bye. Not like, bah, 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 bah. what's your number? Let me follow you. Ah, ah, ah. Hi, bye. Play a little bit of hard to get. They should become a contact friend, first of all, before you go any further. Don't even ask for their number. Don't even ask for their name. At least know that mm, it's, it's a guy or mm, this, this, this woman, she's there. She exists, all right? That's what we call a contact friend. The second stage is what we call a casual friend. Casual. You conversate. They know you want to have So, yeah, hey, how are you? How's everything? How's life? No intimacy, no physical contact, no information. Where did you live? Ah, what's your channel? What's your, ah, uh -uh. just say, hey, what's up? How are you doing? What are you doing? What's you up to? Oh, you look good. Okay. Uh, just no, no, no information. Just casual friend. They don't need to know so much about you. All right. But at least you know that they are there. Okay. They are there. And no, you're not keeping them pending. You're just not giving out too much, all right? You've, you've got to keep it that way. you just got to see. You've got to taste the waters to see how it's going to be before you go into anything that's going to be deeper. And then the next stage, I call it close friend, okay, close friendship, all right? This is now where you begin to call the person daily. You get the person's number. You call them daily. You become friends. You become close friends. I've missed you. You're talking all night. That kind of relationship where you're not even going to sleep. You're just texting all 
night, you know, you're looking forward to seeing your phone vibrate or ring or whatever you call it. You're looking forward to seeing you are now becoming close friends, all right? Oh, what are you doing this evening? Oh, can I just surprise you? The guy comes, bam, 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 bam. He brings you Nando's or whatever it is. Ah, yo, yo taken all right that's what we call close friends all right thank you so much auntie barbara you see that auntie barbara is telling you play a little bit of hard to get don't, blah, 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 blah. Ah, don't rush everything so all right they become your close friend all right and see number four remember we said number first contact all right you just bump into the person high by casual just conversate with them no intimates no physical contact no no telephone number third is when they become a close friend you call them daily you speak daily all right you even mention the can name panel of your you know to the parents or to anybody who is there and then the fourth part is the committed person this is now someone you're going to commit your life with this is now someone who is going to sacrifice for you and you're going to sacrifice for them this is now somebody who can carry you or you can carry them. This is now somebody who's going to be closer than your own siblings, someone who's closer than your own mom. This is someone who now understands you. This is now what you call a committed friend. They're there forever. This is do or die. You're not looking anymore. You're not searching anymore. You're not on the market anymore. You've removed yourself from Tinder. <laughs> All right, you've removed yourself from Tinder, and then now you are you know that ah, this is this is the person, okay, and you begin to become uh committed with that person. So, those are the four C's of, 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 of a relationship, all right. And I'm going to talk to you about Genesis 24. I know a lot of you have read Genesis 24, but you haven't read it the way I've read it, and so I'm going to explain it to you. Genesis 24 is a verse where uh, uh Abraham sends his servant, he's a named servant, but we don't have Eliezer, he sends Eliezer to go and find a bride for. Isaac because Rebecca has died. Isaac's mother has died and Isaac is crying non-stop. The father is trying, push up, push up. The guy is crying. So, do you know what this guy needs a wife? He needs to grow up. So now uh, Abraham sends Eliezer to go to go and pick a woman for him and Abraham and Eliezer make a covenant and make a vow and Eliezer vows before the Lord and says Lord give me good speed. Let me find a uh, wife for uh, my, my master uh, okay, my master's son, my prince. And then now he goes. And so now Eliezer goes. And when he gets to this well, he meets Rebecca coming. Now, this is what I need you women to learn. If you're going to learn anything right now, this is very important. It's Genesis 24. Some of you may need to read it. You won't see it until I explain it, okay? So now, in Genesis 24, there is what is known as the camel test. So Eliezer now reaches out to Rebecca. He sees her and he begins to believe this is the woman. She is beautiful. She's walking ahead of the other women. She's coming with camels, and she's come also with a big uh, a jar of water, and Eliezer is sat on the well. She is coming to him, and he descends. This is the one that is going to marry Isaac, all right? He's picking the bride for Isaac. Now, all of a sudden, he asks her for water, all right? Can I have some water, please? Now, back in those days, it was a tradition for the women, listen to me, it was a tradition for the women to now, when they're carrying the pitch back in Zambia or in South Africa, wherever we are from, South Africa or Africa or Shangom, wherever, they put the bucket or the thing on the head. Back in the Middle East, the women carry it on the shoulder. They carry the pitcher on the shoulder. So now, if somebody asks you for water, you are carrying a pitcher on your shoulder, which means that you're going to take this pitcher and you're going to call the man and you're going to pour out some of the water to the man. And the man or the person is going to drink from your pitcher. It's going to drink from a pitcher. You're going to move closer. You're going to pour out a bit and then come like that. Okay. So he asks for water. So she draws the water and she's going to pitch to him. But she decides to shock him. She doesn't pitch the water to him. She now gives him the water at an arm's distance and pours it out for him. And now he doesn't need to bend up or look up, but he drinks in a modest way, all right? So the test number one was to see the modesty and the humility of Rebecca. Rebecca was a modest person. Why? Because she kept her head away from the head of the servant. Are you understanding? Because had she poured the water like this, her head and the head of the servant would have been near each other. 
There's, there's a serious situation about close proximity. You'll find it when Jesus names his disciples. Every time you read the disciples, the first disciple always mentioned is Peter. The last disciple always mentioned is Judas. Anywhere in the Bible you read, they will always be aligned that way. Why? Jesus kept the closest people to his heart close to him. And those that need to be furthest, he kept them far away. Every time you read about Judas, you read that he is number last. Why? There are some people that you should know from an arm's distance, but still stay humble. There are some people that should not come near your head or near your mouth or near your lips or should not come near your neck. All right. That is some serious stuff there. That was the first test, the test of modesty and humility. The second test was to see, because now most of the times, if you give a man the pitcher of water, the man will draw from the water or drink from the water and he contaminates the water. All right, so the second test was to see what she was going to do with the water. She did not take the water and spill the water. She took the water and gave it to the camels of this man, Eliezer, the camels, the animals he came with. So she was not wasteful. The second test was the way, the, the test of resourcefulness, all right? Resourcefulness. He was going to see, is she going to waste it or is she going to uh, spend it, all right? The third test, hallelujah, was the test of sensitivity, all right? Was she sensitive, all right, to the needs of others? Not only did she feed the camels of this man, she gave water to the people and the entourage that he came with, all right? She had a heart for the needs of others. Guess what? She was going to be a perfect wife for Isaac. That is known as the camel test. It's a Jewish test, all right? It teaches you, number one, are you a modest person? Are you a humble person? Are you wasteful or resourceful? Are you a sensitive person? That is what it teaches you. You know, in life, you can be a queen of the ice or you can be a queen of nice, all right? She decided to be a queen of nice. There are so many queens of the ice out there. Queens of the ice are on social media. They're on Facebook. Everything about them is fake. They're the queen of the ice. Or you can be the queen of nice. You can be a good person with a good heart, who is humble, who gives, who does all these things. Are you understanding? So that's what makes you a woman of virtue. All right. So when you're looking for, uh, uh, when a man is looking for a, a woman, we see this from Eliezer. These are some of the things you need to look for. Don't look for someone who's too proud. Don't look for someone who wastes. Don't look for someone who, because wasting, waste people are opportunity wasters and time wasters. If you see someone who's wasting money, you go somewhere, you go with them and they're just wasting money. Guess what? They'll waste your life. They'll waste your time and you'll cry in the end. All right. You need to be with someone who's resourceful, someone who thinks of others, someone who's going to ask you, how are you doing? How is your mom doing? How are your siblings doing? Someone who's going to reach out, someone who's sensitive to your needs as well as their needs. So this is a good test for us in a relationship. You must not go out. And when you see this guy already, he, you've taken, he's taken you out and then he pulls out his wallet and then he goes, ah, no, 50 feet. At 50 50, at the 50 no, please leave that person alone and let them be, all right? Because <laughs> 50 H H now. So, uh, the next thing that we're gonna learn here is, uh, is, is compatibility, all right? Uh, are you compatible with the person? A lot of people are desperate, and you'll find that they'll go out with what's left over. Can I tell you what? Life is too precious for you to spend it with the wrong person. Life is too precious for you to spend it with the wrong person, all right? There is a difference between complete. There is a difference between complete, and there is a difference between finish. Somebody write that down. If I'm looking for a partner, who, uh, who I'm compatible with, and I find her the way I found my wife, and we are compatible with each other, we help each other, we build each other, which means she completes me, I complete her. We are complete, we are one, we have become one. But if I find a wife or a person who is a knife, <laughs> if I find a fire, someone who always brings fire into my house, <laughs> then I'm finished, all right? So that's the difference between the two. So I'm gonna ask you this question. Are you compatible with the person who's calling you? Are you compatible with the person that you are with? Are you compatible with him? 
you've got to be compatible with somebody, all right? Because good looks attract the eyes. <laughs> tell me, I'll tell you about it. There are so many good looks out there that are attracting the eyes. And look at them, none of them is married. But a good character attracts the heart. So you've got to have a good character. It's not about looks only. It's about usefulness. I always preach this in church. It's not about your good looks. It's about how useful you are to God. So this girl here now, Rebecca, well, I mean, sorry, uh, Rachel, uh, yes, was, was now useful to the man of God. She was useful to, to she, she, she become useful to Abraham and she'll become useful to, uh, to, uh, to Isaac. So I'm going to ask you, how compatible are you with the person that you are, all right? Now, the whole idea of you and the whole reason of why you are dating, sorry, I'm looking for my home, is simply because, is simply because you want to find love or you want love to find you. Love is a beautiful thing. Love is the best thing. In fact, there was one disciple who preached on love more than any of them. His name was John, the beloved. He preached on love so much. He, when he was writing the book of Revelations, that was one of the moments he was most angry because every time he, John opened his mouth, it was about love. Love one another. Be kind to one another. Be affectionate with one another. Be peaceful with one another. Be strong with one another. Desire one another. There are 58 one another's in the, in the Bible. Okay, I like counting. I like this. See the statistics. 58 one another's. I just looked at them down on the left side praying. The brick attack, attack, attack. All right. There are one another's. And most of them came from John. All right. He is talking about one another a lot. Why? Because all of us want to find love. We want to find someone who is in love with us and want to find someone who loves us. You know, when you when you are living outside love, when there is nobody who loves you, life is going to be horrible. Do you know right now there are some people that are ready to commit suicide because they don't know that they are loved. It is too late when you're crying for somebody when they've gone. You've got to show them the love now. Parents, show your children the love now. Tell them you love them every day. All right. Tell I tell my daughters, my babies, my son, I tell them every day, I love them. Good night, love you. Good morning, love you. All this love you. Text message, love you. Just love, 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 love. All right. With so much love in the house. Why? Because love is actually a condition. Love is an atmosphere. Love is something that makes people grow. So we all want to find love. Now, there's seven types of love. The first kind of love we find here is love that we call familiar, familiar love, all right? Familiar love, restored love. It's the love that is uh, out there when people begin to know each other, when people want to, uh, friends, want to be in the same clique or same group. It's just familiar love, all right? Then uh, or it could also be family love, all right? It could be uh, family love, familiar love, family love, people that you, you think are close to you, that your close friends, your close contacts, your close family. Familiar love is called storage, all right? The second kind of love is friendly love. All right, some of you love your friends so much. There's more pictures on your Facebook, on your Instagram, on your Twitter of your friends than you actually your parents and all your loved ones. Why? Because that is not as friendly love. That's your crew. That's your clique. It's called failure. All right. Then there is romantic love. This is now boyfriend, girlfriend, couple thing, marriage thing, all right? This is now called eros. That's where we get the word erotica from, all right? And then there's also what is known as divine love, all right? This is called agape. This is biblical love, Christian love, brotherly loving kindness, all right? Then there is love, which is known as infatuated love, all right? This is now when you have strong feelings. For instance, you go to a place or you go to your friend's house and then you see your friend's brother and you'll be like, hey, your heart moves. That is infatuated love, right? It's not really there. It's no, you don't even know the person. It's just like a lot of people have Korean movies and they love this star. And I'm like, I don't know why people are infatuated with so much Korean and they love these guys. And they're so much in love with them, all right? And then there's also self-love. Some people love themselves so much. You've got to look at football players nowadays. They Before the football match, they paint their hair. They do their sides. They look up. They, the men are now doing uh, eyebrows. Uh, okay, they're doing everything. Manicure, pedicure. I mean, there's so much self-love in the man. If you come to the United Kingdom, this is no joke. If you come to the United Kingdom, the barber shops in the United Kingdom are better than the saloons. Go to a saloon. The saloon will be some hidden corner by the rubbish bin. 
go to the barber shop. It's in front of the front street. Glass black inside. The guys who are shaving you, they look like models. You, you enter there also. You, <laughs> you don't even ask for the price. So just shave your hair and take out your wallet and, and go in peace. All right. There's so many chemicals they are putting on you. They are shaping you. That hey, I said, Jesus, I just, I just shaved. So I stopped going to the I just, just giving me myself. I just shaved myself, my own, my own self, and I'm happy myself because you go there, you feel like it's a competition. Men are doing this, are doing the eyebrows, doing their beards, doing the what, 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 you know. Uh, men are looking good nowadays, okay? So it has changed now, all right? So that is known as self-love, all right? And then uh, there is also what is known as uh, courtly love. This is uh, this is dangerous love. Courtly love is when you're unmarried and you're flirting. Uh, and most of the times, courtly love is usually you find that you're flirting with the wrong person. Maybe this person is in a relationship or the person is already taken and you're flirting with them. That's courtly love, all right? So those are seven types of love. Uh, uh, but the most important one for you is the erotica one, which is romantic love. You need to be in eros love, all right? Uh, you are looking for a partner. You want to be with someone. So it's eros love that you need. You don't live, uh, you don't need to be flirting with someone. You don't need someone to be flirting with you being a time where you know they're already taken. All right, that is for the... Uh, Infatuation. That don't do that. It's, 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 it's actually time wasting. It takes away your time. It takes away your beauty. It erodes you and it corrodes you. All right. So uh, we are all looking for love and we want to find love. Now the best thing that I found, you see, the Bible is a very strange book because the Bible has got hidden meaning. The Bible has got so much hidden meaning. You know, every time I read the word of God, God reveals something to me. I almost sit down and cry. When I was writing this little book, God showed me the rainbow. And he began to speak to me about the colors of the rainbow. And he said, where do the colors of the rainbow come? They come from light. When God said, let there be light, you see, God created something once. The Bible says he created the heavens and the earth. And then everything else he began to command. No, he began to separate. All right. When he, God said, "Light, let there be light," he was saying about there. So light was already there. God has created the heavens and the earth, and everything that needs to be created is already there. So now God now begins to relocate things. He says, "Let there." So so light was somewhere, and God said, "There," and light went there, and darkness was. And then the next verse you did is darkness and light were separated, and all of them like, "What?" And then God now begins to say, let the herbs come from the ground. Let the waters come from the land. Let the, he, do you know when God created the animals, the fish and the sea and the birds, he commanded them to come out of the water. Everything was already in the water. Everything. Read the Bible. He says, let the, 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 the fowls of the air come from the water. And you'll be like, what? So they were already living in the water and God just begins to separate them. So when God showed me now the rainbow and he began to show me that the rainbow came from light. One light, one light source, the same, the same word, let there be light. And then from there, the colors now began to change, all right, into seven colors, into seven different prisms, all right? And now, all of a sudden, these prisms represent man's character, all right? These prisms represent man's character. No wonder Joseph, his brothers hated him because the, the father made him a coat of many colors. No, it's that the guy had so many characteristics and personalities in himself. All right, whoa, let me not go there because <laughs> can I break it down a little bit? I'm gonna just divert a little bit. Let me divert a little bit. You see, when God made the first uh, uh ark of covenant, Moses was carrying it, it had three places outer court, uh, inner court, and the holy of holies. Let's move away from that. When Solomon made his temple, it had three layers, but it had 90, 90 rooms, nine zero. 90 rooms where they kept sacrifices, kept this, kept that, kept that, kept. They kept so many different things. So that this, this temple now had many compartments. Are you understanding? So now Jesus now, he becomes and he says that our body is the temple of the Holy Spirit. So which means in us, we've got compartments that must be filled. So when Jesus now goes to the man, the, the, the demon, the man with the legion, the demons which were living in him, they were living on different floors, different layers, different rooms, different compartments. Now, that's the same way with love. Love, when love must be complete, when love has to be complete, your body is the temple. Love is not just going to be a feeling of inside or emotion or, or sight. Or the, love is going to be different things. And the Lord broke them down to me through the rainbow. Because when God put the rainbow there, it was a promise of his love and of his covenant. 
and you look at the mercy seat or the outer seat of God, you will find that this, uh, this, this rainbow speaks more of volumes. That's why you now find that the gay community, the pride community, are using the symbol of love. And they've taken away one color. God's colors have got seven. They have, their colors have got six. Because they are trying to show you that they can do without God. But everything man on his own is balanced. But now let's look at the colors of the rainbow, all right? So uh, when, 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 you, when, when you're when you going to court somebody, I want you to look, at, look out for these seven things that this person must have. Seven things, okay, from the colors of the rainbow, all right? Red is the color of romance, all right? Red is the color of romance, this person, red is an attractive color, whether you like it or not, whether it's convenient for you or not. Red is a color that will just take you on. That's why you find that on Valentine's Day, they sell you red roses. They don't sell you white roses. <laughs> you buy white roses, the woman will hit you with them. It's not my funeral. So uh, uh, red is a color of togetherness. The word together, if you separate it, means to get her. In order to get a woman, in order to get the woman, you've got to be a red person. You've got to be dangerously in love. You've got to be colorfully in love. You've got to paint the town red. You've got to paint her world red. You've got to show her the red sign, not the red flag, girl, the red sign that I want you, that I love you, that I want to be with you. You've got to show yourself that you're the only person who is here. Red is the strongest color. You've got to be the person with the strongest bid to win the woman. All right? So that is the red color for you. And men need to do that. Women also, you need to be red for your husband. You need to be red for your bride-to-be. You need to let him know he's the only one. You need to let him know that you are the, you are, you are the brightest one. And there may be some that were trying to, 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 to come around. You, you need to stand out. Stand up and stand out. All right? Red is the color that will prove that somebody looked and somebody found. The second color is orange. Orange represents fires and flames. When Moses gets to the burning bush, he sees fires and flames. When Isaiah looks up into heaven, he sees the angels. There were fires and flames, and there was an altar with burning. Tongue. So fire is the color of burning. It's the color of burning. Orange is the color of burning. You need to have a burning relationship. You know, when you are really in love, your heart must burn for the person. Your passion must burn burn. You must be on fire for the person. The fire person must be on fire for you. Your phone must ring. That's what they even call. Uh, what they call, ah, my, my, I was feeling butterflies in my stomach. Uh -uh. That's just like a spark of the fire, all right? The fire, that, that, is, that should be there naturally, all right? Sometimes uh, uh, if I've missed my wife and I see her and when she's dressed, she's going for work and I just wake up and I just look and I just like, wow, fire just comes. So you need to be fire. For, for, for the people that that, 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 that that you love, that are around you. Fire, all right, it takes away fear. You need to be a person who is daring, all right? Love is tested by fire, all right? When troubles come, fire uh, is the thing that will burn the troubles out to show you that this thing is going to stand. So you need to avoid fire extinguishers. You need to avoid fire extinguishers, all right? Uh, number three, yellow. The next color is yellow. When you look at into, into your house or you look at your bulbs, the bulbs are not white. They're actually yellow. They emit a yellow color. Uh, the, that word, that yellow, it, it means to shine. It means illumination, all right? Listen to me. Love never chases. Love chooses, all right? Somebody write that one down. Love never chases. Love chooses. When you are illuminated by love, when love has come and something has illuminated you, the person won't have to chase you. The person has already chosen you. So you need to also now bring your guard down and you need to know that, you know what? I'm also going to choose you. You've chosen me. 
I've also chosen you, and I want you, and I desire you. Not fear. No, 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 no. All right. There's a difference between being foolish and playing hard to get. There's a place where you need to understand that. Look, you've reached this place. You both know you love each other. You both know you're on fire for each other. You now need to begin to let your relationship shine, and you've got to know that you know this guy is not going to chase me. He has chosen me. All right. Um, the next color there is green, all right? Green uh, symbolizes growth. Green also, is a pro people say it's prosperity, but I say, I say it symbolizes growth, all right? Anything that doesn't grow, it doesn't have life, all right? So green means that you need to begin to tend to your love. You need to do the things that made you fall in love. You need to, to go to the places that you like. The, you need to do the things that you like that will make the love grow. Don't do things that will make the love not grow. Do things that will make the love grow, all right? I was studying uh, people that are successful in what they do. They do the same thing over and over until it begins to succeed, and they continue that cycle. They never stop, all right? So you in a relationship, if your dude likes this, do it all the time for him. He's going to fall in love with you. He's going to become a beautiful flower. Because anything that you tend to well becomes a beautiful flower. It grows. And guess what? Love too also grows. So green is for growth. The love must grow. The trust must grow. Things must grow in life, all right? So uh, I believe that uh, uh, green is there to help people grow. And number five. All right, is blue. All right, the color blue. Blue uh, stands for completeness and it stands for uh, being uh, co uh, completeness compatible and being comfortable. Right. Uh, uh, the difference uh, here, what I'm saying is that blue is a color that makes you reach out for more. You see, when you are in a relationship, you don't settle for where you are. You don't settle for the bed sitter you are in. You don't settle for the Morris you are driving. You don't settle when you come together. Blue is going to make you guys reach for the sky. It's going to make you expand. It's going to make you do more. Together, you are a force that can be not be reckoned with. Together, you are better. Together, you are bigger. Together, you are stronger. So blue is that color. That's why Chelsea is the best team in the world. They're winning everything. And that's my tip because they're blue. Are you understanding? All right. So blue is that color that will help you. All right. Uh, and then the next one is our indigo. Indigo, it represents your character. You know, one of the most important things in life when you're dating somebody is the character of the person. Be very careful with some people because how they treat your parents, their in-laws, must really matter, all right? Because that's how they're going to treat them for the rest of their lives. How they respect you and how they respect your in-laws is to show a lot of colors. That's to do with character. Indigo. Indigo it represents honesty and integrity. All right, this is the part where you see in a relationship if the person is a liar or if the person has got integrity. If the person is able to say, honey, I'm sorry, it's my fault. I should have done better. I should have known better. You know, this is the part where instead of playing the blame game, instead of saying, oh, you're always blaming me or you're always accusing me. And you know, there are words that destroy a marriage. There are words that destroy a marriage. All right, and some of the words that destroy a marriage are, are words like you always. All right, so those things, please delete them from your, your, your diary, or you always delete that from your diary. All right, uh, uh, or why haven't you? you? You delete that from your diary, okay? Uh, they take those negative words and put positive words in there. All right, honey, you're my honey bunny. Honey, can we try this together? Can we try a different way? All right, so honesty and integrity is indigo here. Watch this. Every man and every woman should have three things for the color indigo to work, for their character to be the best character. Number one, they should have a good head, all right? Always know where you are going. Always know what you want. Always know what you're planning for and tell your other partner. Number two, have a good heart. You, If you have a good heart, guess what? You're already going to have a better relationship because when your heart is good, your life will be good. Then number three, have a good hand. Listen to me. 
every relationship needs to find a working model. You need to find that you need to work together. Your work must be compatible. It's not a competition. It's about togetherness. So have a good head, have a good heart, and have a good hand, all right? That's what is going to grow the indigo, the aurora. You go into these classes today, they're trying to grow the energy around you. No, it's indigo. It's in the Bible. It's having a good heart, all right? And then the last one here is the color violet. All right, violet. This is now the last color when sacrifice and truth have met. That's the color that they've removed from the, this. One. When sacrifice and truth have met, it means it is maturity because sacrifice and truth, when they are put together, it means the relationship has matured. But relationships can mature. People can grow in a relationship. And you find when a relationship has matured, the couple look like each other. The couple dress like each other. The couple do things together. The couples are they're, they're like peas in a pod. All right? I love my leadership on my church. I love looking at these couples in the church. They are just typical examples of how I want my marriage to be because they're always together. They always work together. They're always doing things together. So that's why I could not even pick one as a leader and leave out the other one. I had to pick them together. So that whatever they want, if I say one thing to one and I say another thing to another one, they can go and then they say, ah, it's playing us. Then they can work it out together. And guess what? They come up with even a better solution. And do you know what? They've just held us together. They've held the church together. Why? Because maturity. Every church, every couple, every family needs people that are mature. And guess what? Your relationship needs to be mature. All right? There are some people that have been married for 30 years, but they are still not mature because it means that uh, they are both childish. They're both just doing it for showing up sakes, but really they're not mature. So maturity shows you that you are established, all right? Maturity means that you found the gold at the end of the rainbow. It means you've kept the vows, you've kept the promises, and through it all, you have become stronger. So now, when you are looking for someone that you want to spend your life with, you've got to look at their heart. You've got to weigh their heart. Don't look at what the man drives. You've got to look at what the man, uh, what, what drives the man, all right? Because in life, sometimes someone may not have uh, what it takes. But when you come into the, their life and you work together, they become a somebody. They become a better person. You become a better person because iron sharpens iron. So when you're going for a relationship, don't look for someone who can buy you an iPhone 13. Look for someone who can get you the first block and the first piece of land together. And together you can build a home. Together you can build the future. Together you can build families. Don't look for someone who will take you to Dubai. Because guess what? When he takes you to Dubai and you come back, uh, he, when he drops you, he's going to pick somebody else and he'll drive, take them to Johannesburg. All right? You've got to find someone who is after your heart. God found David who was after his heart. In life, when you find somebody who loves you for your heart, you found your relationship. You've been found by somebody because it's all about the heart, all right? The heart is the most important thing in a relationship. So you'll find that there are some people, uh, uh, they love you because of your soul. All right, because of the way you're emotionally connected, because of the way they are chemically connected. There's some people who love you because of your mind, because of how you look, your physical appearance, all right, because of what you do, because whether you are a doctor or you're a professor, they'll love you because of your career. Look at these footballers. These footballers actually. I feel very sorry for them because as long as they are footballers, these women will be around them. Immediately their career is over, boom, the woman divorces and takes half. Why? Because they like the limelight. They like to be a somebody. They want to be in the papers. They want to be on Instagram. They want to be uh, the influencers, all right? They are, they are out there because of the physique. It's a mental kind of love. So you find these footballers and these basketball players, these sportsmen players, they're all falling for people that look like a model 
all right, that look like what the papers, that look like what the people want. They're going for what the people want rather than for what their heart wants. And you find that most of the times in these relationships, they are lonely most of the times in this relationship because money can be there, but they are lonely. They have not met their heart so they are, they have not met what they really want. And guess what? They are wasting each other's destinies and each other's times. No wonder you find that nowadays, there are so many divorces. Why? Because you married somebody because of his season and not because of a reason. All right? And there are so many people that are marrying people because of the season they're in. You find someone is a president, someone is a mayor, someone is doing good, and someone comes and marries because, ah, it's good, going good. But when things come down, when the curtain closes, when things begin to fall, you find these people cannot stick. Why? Because they never really loved you for your heart. They loved you for your mental, for the capacity, for the outward. It is outward love outside love it's courting on the outside you know what i'm worried about uh what we call blind dates i'm worried about uh have you ever been to what they call uh, uh what you call that a date something something is called a date what a uh, date something i can't remember what it's called but you, you pay money it's here in the uk you pay money you go to this room and then there'll be different uh people in the room when it starts uh the They'll ring the bell and you've got five minutes to sit at the table, introduce yourself with somebody. When they ring the bell, you move the next one, introduce, you keep on going on and you're tasting. And then at the end of the day, you now can go back and you can see, pick someone and say, hey, can we go for a date? Can we try it out? You know, there are a lot of what I call tasters. There are a lot of people who are trying to taste something. You know, there's a saying that I once read. It says that you, you can't sample the milk unless you put a down payment on the cow. You cannot sample the milk unless you oh speed dating. Thank you, uh, my beloved, my, my beloved stuff. Yeah, speed dating. Yeah, I mean, I don't know these terms. Or me, I mean, no sense. Thank God. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Yeah. Speed dating. You go there. Speed. What do you do? What do you do? And you're basing yourselves on the mental capacity instead of on the heart capacity. Are you understanding? And you find that these things end in disaster because now these guys will go out on a date and everything looks good. You know what? What I hate about dates is that a lot of times we go to the best places on our first date. You find he'll take you to a very expensive place. The guy is using his savings and you go and you think that's the world. No, the guy is at home. He's not, he's not even eating what, 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 is, what is bought for you on the plate. The guy is living on uh, cornflakes. And Weetabix is living on uh, <laughs> on McDonald's, not even McDonald's, Dixie Chicken. It's $3.99. Four pieces of chicken and chips. All right, Dixie Chicken. Dixie special, I like it. So he's living on Dixie Chicken. But meanwhile, he's taking you to a very expensive place. He's taking you to the Shard Hotel. <laughs> and he's bought you a plate, 200 pounds a plate, and they've just put an S on them. What's this? It's cream. What cream? Is it <laughs> Camel's milk? Hey! You've never even tasted Camel's milk, but it's still on the plate. So you've got to uh, uh you've got to go for the heart. Let let let's let's stop playing game, let's stop playing church, all right. And one of the things I've noticed, church people, is that really, I'll be honest with you. If possible, this is my own heart's feeling. If possible, never marry, never date someone from your own church. Because the moment you guys come in, you are dressed looking good. You only see yourselves when you are looking good. Because on Sunday, you wear your Sunday best. <laughs> come to Bread of Life. Ah, the guy is dressed. Oh. Ah, me, I can't even stop dressing now. I can't dress anymore. They will dress. They look good. The church is just smelling of nice perfume. Say, so, hey, yeah, these guys are rich. Ah. <laughs> So, people dress their best. Yeah, wait for them. Take them home. <laughs> You're very disappointed. So, don't don't dress. Don't date someone who's dressed good. I remember once I was saying in Zambia that if you want to marry a beautiful person, or if you want to marry someone, go to a funeral where they are crying. And the one who's crying and still looks beautiful, that is the one that you must marry. <laughs> I think that is still true, all right? Because a lot of people are dressed good, but we don't know. We're looking at the mental. That's the mental. That's the outside love. Remember, God said, love the Lord with all your heart. It has to start with the heart, all right? It's going to start with the heart. You've got to find something intentional or unintentional that has attracted you to the person, not what they're driving, not how they're dressed, all right? And that's why it's very dangerous. Say, oh, what kind of a man do you like? Well, I like, he won't appear. <laughs> he won't appear. That person won't appear. 
all right you've got to go for the character and not for how he dresses okay because just dressing anybody can see that those are just clothes they go in and out of fashion so please beloved i'm gonna pray for you right now as we close i think uh i've exhausted uh, most of my time there's more points in this book but uh, i won't go through them today uh i have run out of time so i just want to pray for someone today you know because the bible says he who finds a wife finds a good thing all right and obtains favor from the lord you'll find that a lot of people are not happy in their marriage people are killing each other people are fighting each other people are cheating there's so much going on in different relationships. Why? Because people are not marry happy. They rushed. They rushed it. When you say I do quap, you have to take yourself off um, Tinder and uh, all these places. All right? But there are so many people that have said I do and they're still doing these things. So it's simply because they rushed into it. I'm praying that you may not rush into it, that you may follow the principles of these books because in life, principles can never break. You will break before a principle breaks. If you're going to be looking for a heart, if you're going to be following the four C's, if you're not going to be just too open too quickly, if you're going to become a contact friend and you're going to meet all the four criteria of the friendship in life, stage by stage, take it slowly and then open up later. Look for a person who looks out for your. Remember the, 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 the camel's test. That is seriously for the women. Look out for that, even in a man. Someone who is interested in your welfare, interested in you and your family, not just you. Someone who is humble. Someone who can look after you before he looks after himself. Or oh, That is very important. That is sacrifice. Those are the people that you must be looking out for. And once you find such a person, listen to me, you have just got to shine. You've got to follow the yellow color. You've got to shine. Don't let them chase you. Remember, love never chases. Love chooses. So take it slow and just believe God for it. And can I shock you? I've never come across God saying, oh, that's your wife, marry her. The only person God did that with was Adam. And the day he did that, God got in trouble because Adam, when Adam sinned, he says, God is the woman you gave me. So God was partly to blame as well. Are you understand? So God nowadays, does, you pray, you fast, God will never show you who your wife will be. You will find your wife yourself. Also, the Bible says, he who finds a wife finds a good thing and obtains favor. God will just favor you. Say, oh, this is one favor. Ha! He blesses you. He just pats you with favor. Because God is not in it. So it has to be what you desire, what your heart desires. The Bible says he'll give you that, your heart's desires. He'll show you what it is, your heart's desires. And you guys will have to work it out together. Are you understanding? So we're going to pray now. I believe God is going to just touch some of you. I believe God is going to just give some of you hope because some of you have given up on love. You've given up on relationships. Can I tell you what? Love still exists. Love is still there. Bible says the Lord's loving kindness is a tender message are new every morning. Love is new every day. If that one left you, let them go. There's a new one coming and a better one coming. If that one disappointed you, let him go. There's a new one coming. There's a better one coming. All right? I'm believing that this will be the year that you will get married. I'm believing that this will be the year that some of you will get engaged. I'm believing that this will be the year that you will be found. And some of you will find. I'm believing God that this will be the year that that whatever it is that covered you, that God will unveil you. I'm believing that this is the year that your destiny helper is going to come to your location to pick you up and take you back. Rebecca uh, was picked up, all right, picked up uh, in style. All the people married in her life. And when she wasn't married, so the day that she married, her brother said something that your enemies will bow at your gates. When you read through that, you find that they used to mock the girl. You're not married. Okay? This is the day that your mockers will become your celebrators in life because you're about to marry a prince. Okay? The Bible says the first shall be last. Those who that married first, guess what? By the time you marry you, you'll be the one in fashion. I'm believing God that you're going to have a big wedding. You're going to have a successful wedding. I'm believing God that you're going to invite me for your wedding. I don't care where you are, whether you are in Nigeria, all right, uh, Sister Andrea, whether you're in Nigeria or not, 
just give me a shout. Uh, Bula, whether it's in Malawi, just call me. I'm coming to Malawi. Okay, <laughs> just let me know. I'll be there. Hallelujah. So let us pray. God bless you. Father, we thank you for every person that is looking for a rib or that needs to be found by a rib. We're looking for uh, the missing man that should donate the rib. And we're looking for uh, the missing woman that needs a rib. Father, we pray that wherever the person that needs a rib is, Lord, we I pray, let them be found. Thank you, Father. You are just sense and anointing. I sense the presence of the Holy Spirit. I sense the angel of the Lord, the yellow angel, standing on my left-hand side. Father, I am praying for character reference for these children in heaven. Represent them. And Lord, let their destiny help us find them. In the mighty name of Jesus, I pray for you that this will be the year that you say, I do. I'm praying for you that this will be the year that you will try on that dress. This will be the year that you will dance that dance. This will be the year that your name must change. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. Listen to me. I hope you've been blessed. I have been blessed. I've been so, so blessed. I was tired. But God is good and God is kind. And uh, God has found me favor. And I found a lovely wife. I found a lovely church. And I found a lovely family. So why a family? I'm praying for you that that may be the same for you. The Bible says, as it is with the priests, so shall it be with the people. I'm praying that the blessings God has given me, may he bless you as well. All right. Thank you those that support us, that need us. Remember, my book is on Amazon. It's one of my oldest books. Please go ahead and buy it. It's called Find. It is by me. All right. Austin B.J. Makota. So God bless you. Those that want to support us can support us. Thank you for always sowing your seed to us, for always supporting my ministry. Thank you. You can give PayPal. You can give an account. But I know you've been blessed you've learned something and so thank you so much for such a lovely 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 day god bless you and uh